Last but not least, let us briefly look how planning problems can be captured in ASP. As the two previous uh, problems, the traveling salesperson and the reviewer assignment problem that added the quality of optimization to uh, our problems, we now have a new quality which is dynamics. That is, solutions stable models must now capture plans and plans are objects that describe trajectories in time. Just think of a robot right, that goes from an original position to reach a certain goal somewhere else. And a plan is then a sequence of actions executed by the robot. Now, this well, planning makes us face two uh, challenges. No problems, just challenges, right? So the first one is that finding an optimum plan is in general P-space complete. So actually ASP cannot match this complexity. But the cool thing is, once you bound it, once you say you want to find plans up to a certain length, this drops to NP and then we can use ASP again. So first thing, great. Second thing is, uh, to capture dynamics, we now actually face uh, propositions, statements and change over time. So for instance, this plan for the robot, right? The position of the robot changes after each move action. In the same way, uh, the, let's say the, the, the proposition that describes is the robot hemmed empty, empty, right? Now it's empty, then later on it grips something, let's say the other hand now, now it's not empty, it's empty again, and so on and so forth, right? Because before we just dealt, all the problems we have dealt with before were static problems, right? So the position of a queen, a queen was on 3, 4 or not, but it was not that the queen was moving, right? So there was not the position of the queen at this time, at this time, at this time. This is now a new feature that we have to accommodate. But first of all, let's look at the planning problem as such. What is it? In fact, there are zillions of variations of planning problems. Since I just want to illustrate this to you briefly, I've chosen a very simple one, namely strip spanning. STRIPS, as shown in the footnote, stands for the Stanford Research Institute Problem Solver and actually goes back to 1971, where the STRIPS formalism was used to control Shaggy the robot. And, well, I guess it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, interesting to read up on Wikipedia the story of STRIPS and Shaky, but now let's get back to this formalism. So, the problem instance, so what is a planning problem, is given by a set of fluents, and fluents are propositions that change over time. So the position of the robot is that robot hemmed empty, empty right? So now, now these propositions are called fluents. These are the ones that change or may change. Then there is an initial state and a goal state. The initial state is more or less well, in the state in which we're in. And we just assume that this state is complete, that we know everything about this state. And a goal state is a state we want to reach. And this may just be a property. Right? Something should be true. I want to have coffee in the gold state. Then, to achieve a gold state is to, 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 to go from the initial situation to, the, to, to a state where, where the goal is satisfied. We have a set of actions. And these actions are composed in preconditions and postconditions. So the preconditions tell us when an action is applicable. And the postconditions tell us about the effects of an action. Right? So, um, I cannot... Um, but, the, the precondition to open the door in my back is that I'm in reach of the door. So this precondition is not satisfied right now, right? But if I, once I, open, if I, if I go there and, and open the door, then the post condition would be the door is open, right? So this would be the, the action of opening the door. And as I said, uh, we can actually not deal with arbitrary planning. We can only deal with bounded planning in ASP. And so we also need a, a number that tells us how many uh, actions we can use to form a plan. What is the maximum length of our plan? And then the, the, the goal is to find a plan that is a sequence of k actions that lead us from the initial state to a goal state. That's the planning problem. Or that's more or less the simplified strips planning problem that I would like to model now in ASP. But before we do that, let's look at, let's look at an example. Our example uses three fluents, P, Q, R, these guys are here. And the idea is they can change their truth value over time, right? So we have an initial state where P is true, Q is fa false and R is false. And in the golden state, we want that R is true. Now to get from the initial state to a gold state, we have two actions, A and B. 
Now action A has precondition P and effect Q and not P. Actually in strips positive effects were said to be on the add list and negative ones were said to be on the delete list and I will actually use this add and delete thingy also in the encoding. And now action B, uh, to execute action B Q must be true and then R is uh, is, is made true and Q is made false afterwards, right? So actually both of these actions consume their precondition here. P must be true to execute action A and then it is deleted and the same with Q here. Then as I said, uh, we have to say how, how uh, we have to, well, to, to bound the length of our plans. Here I do this just with two. I want a plan of length two. Again, it's a tiny example, right? Uh, and actually here we find one. This is the plan that we can use to get from the initial state to a state where R is true. So we first execute action A and then we execute action B. And just to illustrate this formally, so this is our initial state, P not Q not R, this is this guy here. Now if we add action A, first thing to check, is it executable? So is its precondition satisfied in this state? Oh yes, here it is, it is satisfied, so the action is executable. When we execute it, we have to add Q and delete P, or make Q true and P false. So here is Q is true and P is false. These are the effects of the action. Now next we have to check whether action B is applicable, where the precondition is Q. Q is true in the state, so B is uh, applicable. And then when we apply B, we make R true and Q false. And this is R is true and Q is false. And now we are in a state that makes R true. And so we are in a gold state and our plan takes us from the initial situation, which is this guy, to a situation or a state where our goal property is true. Now, Let's first of all use this example to illustrate the fact format that we use, right? How does a problem instance look like that represents this example? Here it is. I've chosen a representation that would allow us to represent all possible strips problems um, according to the description I've given so far. So the other thing that you may note is in this representation I've pushed the propositions to the term level. So P, Q and R where in the original descriptions propositions that can be true and false, but here I turn them into terms. And this actually will serve us well afterwards, because keep in mind, the new quality we face here is dynamics. So P, Q and R actually change their truth value over time. And this is something we can nicely model if we treat them as terms and talk about their truth value. Again, you'll see this in a sec. So just to explain a little bit the predicates, so we have uh, K time points from one to K, here, predicate fluent is used to tell us which properties we are looking at when describing states. Here we have our two actions, action A and action B. The precondition of action A is P. The add list of action A, that is the positive effects, is the positive effect is Q. On the delete list of action A, what will it make false is, is P. And in the same way uh, for action B here. And then I describe here again in a um, by, by putting the proposition on the term level, what is the initial state and more or less what, what is not mentioned here is supposed to be false. And here with the query I say I want R to be true in the final state. So this is a, an easy format to describe strips problems. Okay, now let's see actually how we can use this problem instance and with, together with an encoding to find our plan. The key idea of our encoding is to index our fluence P, Q and R that change their value over time with the respective time point 1 to K. Actually this is best explained by going back once more. So this is actually a trace of our plan, right? So that's our plan. And this is the initial state and I will label this with 0. Uh, this is state 0, state 1 and state 2. Now the question is, how do we index the actions? And this is actually the first action and this is the second action. So more or less, this guy will be indexed with one as, and so somehow associated with this state, which also will receive a one. And this is necessary because here P, P is true in state zero, 
P is false in state one and it is still false in state two. So actually we need to distinguish the occurrences of P and that's actually why we use this simple indexing technique. Okay, now that you got the, uh, the intuition, let's see how it is implemented. To this end, we use what is often called a meta predicate, holds, which says that a fluent is true at a certain time point. And so what we do here in initially, we, everything that is initially true, we say that it holds at time point zero. And you see everything that is not uh, declared as being initially true, uh, there we use negation as failure, that it is false, there will be no holds, no holds uh, predicate about it. Okay, this is more or less then these guys here, holds at time point zero, describe the initial state. Now for planning, we first, first of all we look at uh, serial plans, so there are no parallel actions. So we say for each time point there is exactly one occurrence of an action. So we take all the actions that we have, in this case we only have A and B, and only one of them can occur per time point. That's more or less how we generate plan candidates. Good, then the integrity constraint here checks the prerequisite. So it must not be the case that action A occurs and its precondition does not hold in the previous state. So, and this is T minus one. Remember our indexing scheme? So this makes sure now that, again, we, we are evaluating our solution candidate, that whenever we have placed an action in the solution candidate in the state before, its precondition is satisfied. Good. Now here we more or less describe how information is transported from one state to another. Uh, the first one enforces the positive effects of an action. So it says, oh, if an action occurs, its at list, so the fluent that is its positive effect, the fluent that it makes true, must hold at the, the next time step, which is in this case the same. Again, remember our indexing scheme. So this is the an axiom, an, well, this is a rule that enforces the effect of axioms, the positive effect of axioms. Now, the second rule is also called the frame uh, axiom and it implements something like inertia. So the idea is that if a fluent held at time point t minus one, it also holds at the next time point unless an action occurred that deletes this fluent. And this is what this condition here says. So we more or less look at all actions that would delete the fluent that we are currently want, that we want to transport from one to the other. So if this fluent occurs on the delete list of an action, uh, then uh, this, the, this transport cannot happen. And this means actually that none of these actions occurs. Again, this may be sophisticated, I just wanted to put it in because it's another nice application of a conditional literal. Anyway, that's the idea. So all the information is transported from the previous timestamp to the next one, unless this fluent has been deleted uh, or made false by the action that occurred. And finally, we say that it must not be the case that the query holds, well, it must not be the case that the query does not hold at the last time step. So the query must have been derived for the last time step. Keep in mind that we here use an integrity constraint. We just want to check because the plan has to make our query true. Now, last but not least, let's run it. So here is again the, the, our terminal prompt. We launch Klingo. This is the encoding, this is the instance. And I, I say here I want the plan of length two and I also want all the plans. And in fact, in our very simple example, there is only one plan and there are lots of atoms that come out, but the most important one is action A occurs at time point one and action B occurs at time point two. And that's the only, only model that we get. That's the solution. Well, this closes not only our section on planning, but also we are now through with all our case studies. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, well, looking at the videos and that they, you enjoyed them as much as I normally enjoy that, even though recording them on video is much harder than just explaining and hand-waving, but I try to zip myself from time to time. So then let's wrap up. 